help support the channel by contributing to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the cinema snob where we've added new stretch goals and you can take part in our polls, see early reviews, request midnight screenings, and enter contests to win prizes. All of that and more at patreon.com slash the cinema snob. Contribute today. It's midnight somewhere in the world, people, which means I now possess your soul. Look, I'm in need of extra souls since I lost mine somewhere around Nuki or to catch a Yeti. It is my honor to spotlight a movie like At Midnight, I'll Take Your Soul, a movie title that just screams, there's a strange dude about to rip the flesh off of my bone. At Midnight, I'll Take Your Soul, whose original title is, uh, 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 uh Moite la vie sua alma? <laughs> Midwest! It's not only written and directed by horror auteur Jose Mojica Marins, but he stars in the film as well. Widely regarded as Brazil's very first horror film, the movie was such a passion project for Marins that he sold his own house and car in order to get it made. Not only that, it was the introduction to his character Coffin Joe, who isn't actually called that in the movie. He's called Zedu Kaishao, but with a name like Coffin Joe, that also sounds like the creation of a YouTube character. What say you, Sailor Jerry? <laughs> See, he agrees. When the original actor dropped out, Marins easily took over the role, having a long-ass thumbnail to begin with. He was perfect to not only make this film, but to star in it. Here's a guy who knows what he wants so bad that when the crew said they couldn't shoot in the sunlight, he used a prop gun to threaten them into doing so. <laughs> yeah, old school. I hear that's also how they shot playing with fire. The film tells the story of Undertaker Coffin Joe, who sets out at night looking to impregnate a woman so he can have a son and achieve immortality. Lest you forget the zany American remake Paternity starring Burt Reynolds. This 1964 film was more graphic than its American horror counterparts at the time, outside of, say, a Herschel Gordon Lewis movie. And with Brazil's censorship board being disbanded, the decision to ban it went to the states, some of which did so only because of blasphemy and not for violence. That didn't stop the cult status of this film, nor did it stop Coffin Joe from becoming a Brazilian cinema icon. All the way up until Marin's death at the age of 83 in February 2020. Now let's honor this man and his legacy by giving the movie a watch! Now here's a logo that you don't really have to change if you want to turn it into a porn parody. Admittedly, I'm just happy that I'm finally watching a movie with proper subtitles. O que é a vida é o princípio da morte. Welp, that's what I'm gonna see after I die, isn't it? Halloween has come early to the cinema snob. Hey, if we can buy Christmas shit in October, I can watch a Coffin Joe movie in March. Yikes. Abandon all cozy nights at home, ye who enter here. This is a look of, good God, I don't want a snake crawling up my ass. And this title says, get out the fog machine and gather around some black cats. We got a fireside horror story to tell. With the screams in the background, and the wind, it's like going through a carnival haunted house in the best way. It's like these little animated figures are gonna offer me candy or bite off my hand. You know the movie is gonna get you into the horror spirit when just the credits alone could be played on a loop at a costume party. And when a witch introduces the movie to you. <laughs> I've already seen Haunting of Sharon Tate. She warns us not to watch the movie. It's like it comes with its own horror host. I kind of think Wood Rocket should use their characters to do this in front of their movies. I see so many bad movies on this show. Why is one of the great movies telling me not to watch it? Even the director credit has me intrigued. <laughs> Now that is how a horror legend introduces himself to the world. Coffin Joe may dig graves for people, but he still makes funerals pretty awkward. 
<laughs> mm, guess it is time for that will reading. At my funeral, I too want this guy handling everything. I feel this is what Harold Warren wanted to do with Manos, but unfortunately, he shot it on a potato gun. Ué, cadê a carne? And apparently, this is what Wendy's commercials were trying to go for as well. Coffin Joe isn't having the best time at home. His wife can't bear any children, and he's fresh out of meat. He needs his meat. His hat is mostly full of delicious barbecue sauce. He needs that for his ham hocks. And now he's ready to prowl the streets and to review some movies on YouTube. I hear next up he's reviewing a Tramps movie. No wonder he went insane. He's got his eyes set on couple Antonio and Terezina. Don't worry, the man who looks the most like Jack the Ripper is the least likely to murder you. I mean, it doesn't mean he won't try. It just means you should prepare for his very creepy sweet nothings. It was good that I took that out of the final draft of my wedding vows. A night like this calls for a dinner over at the local Texas Roadhouse. You don't dress like Professor Fate from the Great Race if you're not going to get into some kind of bar fight. Solte o dinheiro, homem. Eu não posso. Eu preciso desse dinheiro. Then again, in Coffin Joe's case, he really just needs to ask. <laughs> And even then, you're not leaving in one piece. This must happen a lot since it doesn't really disrupt anyone else's card game. And how does this bar not cut him off at this point? He's an angry drunk, and these bar fights are really gonna drive up the bar's insurance policies. Ooh, he's gonna make them his regular at midnight thing. Now he's off to spread his wisdom of the world elsewhere. I'm this horror movie villain has views that do not align with mine, for shame. Sometimes it looks like life-size dolls are trying to break out from behind his walls. This may be an early Halloween movie, but it's also a late Valentine's Day movie. <laughs> She could probably do better than him. I have the feeling Coffin Joe would be a huge fan of the Life Zone. It's also the world's introduction to Brazilian Fear Factor. No need to be alarmed, kids. I'm sure this is CGI and in no way a real spider. There's drama all around. Geppetto is having a tough time ever since Pinocchio became a real boy. Thus, a good lesson comes in. Leve seu filho. This is a film that knows how to do a good PSA. Coffin Joe may be a rapist and a murderer, but he knows what good parenting is. The witch is about to introduce a screening of Teen Wolf 2 for some reason when she gets some customers. She warns Antonio and Terezina that they will never be married and that disaster will strike. I'm sure that has nothing to do with Coffin Joe. Maybe it's because Antonio becomes a suburban dad who spends too much time taking the belt to the beaver. Look, if Antonio is dumb enough to leave sharp and blunt objects around a man that dresses like he ties his shoes with intestines, you probably deserve to get your head bashed in. He's got to fill the tub to strangle him right into the opening credit sequence. Sadly, he won't get that refund from the witch because her vision is definitely coming true. Clearly, this was an accident. It's easy to mistake your bathtub for your couch and take a nap. Não sei, Bazet. Para mim foi uma grande surpresa. You killed Antonio, didn't you? The casket is telling me there's a body in there, but the torch is telling me that that coffin is filled with buried treasure. <laughs> Oops, it's a body. Continue on with your funeral. Okay, I don't feel so bad now. This is why murderers really shouldn't attend the funerals of their victims. They all want to run Joe the hell out of town, except the bar wench who really just wants to get the place clean so she can close early. Joe has an idea to win Terezina over, though. Create a hilarious Brazilian version of the dead parrot sketch. Only in this one, the canary will be the only thing that isn't dead. A free canary isn't such a bad deal. Unfortunately, he's gonna want to come inside. <laughs> The 
free canary is not worth this. I have the sneaking suspicion that collecting souls is a fetish for him. He's not... Isu. I thought he's uh... the bust. You're mean! Jeez, this movie also works as a propaganda film to warn people away from associating with coffin makers. Let's take a break, shall we? I'm gonna cancel the order on that top hat and cape that I ordered. <laughs> then people will think I'm really, really weird! And now it's time for Lloyd's Out of Context 911 Lone Star Clip of the Week. You are some piece of work, Billy. So I've been told. And this has been Lloyd's Out of Context 911 Lone Star Clip of the Week. The most shocking clip yet! Now that we're back, it's time for a nice, quiet stroll through the graveyard. I'm sure that's probably unrelated. The original Dos Equis commercials had a much darker tone. The most terrifying man in the world says, Drink this beer or I'll piss on your grave. Marins knows how to command a scene with striking horror imagery. This was years before a scene like this would have its coolness stripped away by a 90s emo kid. <laughs> When this guy laughs, angels plummet to the earth and splat on the concrete. The witch comes back to warn him that he also shouldn't watch the movie Bat Pussy. It'll also take his soul. <laughs> See? Look what it did to that girl! Terezina has unfortunately hung herself, and look, we may not be able to press charges, but we've got torches. Can't we just chase this guy to an old mill or something? He's confused as to why Terezina didn't blame him, but oh well, plenty more fish in the sea that he can murder. Again, it's awkward attending these funerals, but where else are you going to go for the best funeral potatoes? And to scare the hell out of the doctor. Boa noite, doctor. That's what a doctor wants to look up and see right before closing time. He's going to make sure this doctor tells no one that he's a creep. It'll ruin Joe's reputation. Ouch. Murdered by a 3D Three Stooges short. And sure, set him on fire too, just to be a dick. Unfortunately, Joe should have been a much stronger believer in karma. <laughs> On second thought, maybe it was a bad idea to anger the spirits. Marins is great at being terrifying and also at monologuing all in the same scene. <laughs> This is who should have taken over the role of Mr. Rourke for that Fantasy Island movie. Don't mind Coffin Joe. He acts like this every time a hurricane is about to hit. This is very similar to how children around my neck of the woods act when they're anxiously awaiting the return of Count Chocula to the stores. No time for that, though. He has another funeral to ruin. Look, you're not giving them much hope when you look like Satan's chauffeur standing over their dead loved ones. They want to believe there's a chance Grandpa went to heaven. While it may be Day of the Dead, it seems like every day around here is Day of the Dead. Only in this case, Brazilian Indiana Jones makes an appearance in the bar. Joe has his sights set on Maria, but uh-oh, competition. Coffin Joe is also cinema's first cock blocker. I understand bravery, but don't stand up to the man who's compelled by the power of Christ's crown of thorns. Eu não vou pegar o dinheiro do chão. Again, if you just tell him his bar tab is maxed out, he'll go away. They leave, but not before calling this Indiana Jones a coward. It's okay, someone else is in town for a funeral, aren't they all? Se a senhorita me permitir, eu ficarei muito honrado em acompanhá-la. Don't go with him! Se encontrar um morto pelo caminho, eu darei recomendações. And stop being so cool! He had to take her home before Michael Jackson offered to do so and turned into a zombie. Not that there aren't other creepy things around here. <laughs> Não tenha medo, é a velha bruxa. Oh, it's just a witch. Why didn't you say so? That's normal. What the hell is going on in this town? 
He gets her home, though, before confronting his own Lloyd-approved decorations. Yeah, I don't like cameras in my face. Coffin Joe is dangerous enough with fingernails. Just imagine what he's like with a gun. It doesn't matter if he hits someone. Everyone in this town is going to die within a week of alcohol poisoning anyway. This is why they stopped letting me take guns into the haunted house. Too many destroyed animatronics. And don't even get me started on the revenge zombies. <laughs> this is what the 60s thought radiation poisoning did. How is Joe gonna get out of this one? Stow south. Stow south. See, there's plenty of these movies. He'll be fine. Aside from dying in his sleep of night terrors, because that's exactly what's gonna happen to me! This is like a Brazilian Estes Perkle movie. This is all foreshadowing a world if the atheist god-hating commies take over Brazil. It's like looking at creepy-as-hell old proof-of-ghosts photos. They may be fake, sure, but they're still scary to look at. This has all been a giant lesson. If you use your demonic powers for evil, the spirits will come back to extract revenge on your evil ass because you are evil and using evil powers is like wishing on a monkey's paw. Sure, you can wish for an apple pie, but the crust is going to be filled with dog shit. It's really scary to learn a lesson in morality. Yes, the cinematography will be absolutely beautiful, but your soul will definitely be taken to hell after this image is burned in your head. On the plus side, the spider is still alive. Zedu Kaishao, however... This movie is just a creeptacular good time. So much so that it was hardly the last time Marins would bring evil Undertaker Coffin Joe into the world. He would make several appearances as the character, most notably in 1967's This Night I'll Possess Your Corpse, and way later in 2008's Embodiment of Evil. The movie is stylish, it's creepy, it's moody, it's over the top, it's Coffin Joe, who's like to Brazil what Freddy Krueger is to the U.S. Marins would make all kinds of exploitation films all throughout his career. In fact, this isn't even the first one of his movies to be featured on my show. He directed the 1987 porno 48 Hours of Hallucinatory Sex, which was reviewed by me and my dick. This movie is a treat. And it's a great way to remember the works of Jose Mojica Marins, his character Zedu Kaishao, and shows that you don't need to wait until October to have a great night watching a super haunting horror film. And why wait for me to end the video by saying something smartass like when you could end it with Coffin Joe saying a really cool line of dialogue? Nem que seja carne de gente. Cuidado, Zé, o diabo tenta. Se eu o encontrar, vou convidá-lo para jantar.